Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is looking at how to go about diagnosing and repairing a fault on a 4-3 hydraulic valve. Now what we have on this system is we have a 4-3 hydraulic valve which is lever operated and what we're going to do before we look at how to diagnose and repair a fault on a similar valve is to actually look, how it look at how it should work in operation. So all we have here is a simple test rig. Um, what we're basically doing is we're delivering oil from a pump uh, through this line here into the 4-3 valve. Now because it's a 4-3 valve, that valve has three positions and four ports. The three positions are, in position one, the oil is going to come into the valve and it's going to be returned directly to the tank through this line. So if you like, it's a bypass loop, oil goes in and goes straight back round to the tank. Okay, so all we're doing there is we're taking load off the pump and we're, and we're taking load off the, off the valve itself. The second position for that valve is going to deliver, through, uh, deliver oil through uh, line A here, which would cause our double acting cylinder to retract. And the third position would deliver oil through pipe B here, causing our double acting cylinder to extend. Okay, so if we start up the rig and then we'll have a look at the valve operating in each of those positions. In the first position here, all we're doing is we're diverting oil from this line directly back into the tank. Now we know that we're relieving pressure on the valve and through the system because our pressure gauge is showing a pressure very close to zero bar. What we would expect to see is when we engage uh, one of the other two positions causing the cylinder to extend or retract, we would expect to see the pressure in the system increase. So let's give that a try now. If we move the valve to the other position, we notice that the, the double acting cylinder on the end there extends. And we also notice that our pressure's increased to roughly 10 bar. If we then move that back to the central position, the pressure drops, because all we're doing is circulating oil back to the tank. And then in the third position, the cylinder begins to retract. Now because we have that central position where we just circulate back to the tank, we can actually stop the double acting cylinder in any position midway through its cycle or closer to the end of its cycle. Now the other, other, the other important feature of this particular valve is that it has a detent and what that means is it will actually lock into each position. So there's no, uh, there's no middle ground, it's either in position 1 or it's in position 2 or it's in position 3 and the valve will instantly engage into those positions, it will lock into spot at each position. Okay, now we're going to head on over to the workshop and look at a valve similar to this that's actually developed a fault. Okay, so the valve that we have clamped in the vise here is exactly the same as the valve that was on the test rig that I showed you previously. Um, the difference with this valve is that it's actually developed a fault. Now, the fault on this valve, uh, as you saw the one on the test rig, what would happen was uh, was that in each of the three positions when the lever moves uh, the lever would detent or the lever would uh, would stop in the given positions for the valve so we'd move it here and it would lock into spot for position two we'd move it here and it would lock into spot for position three now unfortunately this valve isn't working like that and I also suspect that the reason for that is that the spool inside the valve isn't moving when the lever's moved so what we're going to do next is we're going to disassemble the valve uh, we're going to identify the fault and hopefully we're going to repair the fault First of all, on top of the uh, valve body here, we have a number of caps which indicate the ports for, the, uh, for, for each of those valve connections. So up here in the top left we've got T, which would be our return to the tank. Uh, top right here we've got A, which would go to one side of the cylinder. Um, bottom right here we've got P, which would be where the, 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 uh, the pump would uh, deliver oil to the valve. And over here we've got B, which would deliver oil to the, to the opposite side of the, the double acting cylinder. It's really important that when we reassemble the valve, we ensure that these uh, caps go back on in the right place so that anyone connecting the valve will know um, which position uh, or which port to connect each of those components to. Okay, so first of all we'll remove the caps. I'm going to keep all of the parts together so that when I reassemble it, everything, everything I need is on hand. So now that I've removed the blanking caps underneath, you'll see some 4mm uh, cap head screws. Okay, so the next job that I need to, to do is to remove the four 
cap head screws so that I can then remove the valve body from the manifold of the valve. This top section here is the valve body and down the bottom here is the manifold. So I'll do that now. First of all I'll loosen off the four cap head bolts. And then I'm going to remove each of those so that I can remove the valve body. Okay, so as I remove the last of the cap head screws, the valve body is now free uh, to come away from the manifold. I'm actually finished with the manif manifold. There's no, there's no faults on there that I'm aware of. Um, so I'm going to remove this from the vise place the valve body back in the vise so that I can get in there and see what's actually, uh, what's actually happening with this, this valve spool and to basically see why the lever isn't engaging that valve spool. Okay. So as I clamp this in the vise I need to take care not to damage the O-rings because this is what gives us an, uh, an oil tight seal so that the oil can flow between the manifold and the valve body without any leaks. So I'm going to secure that in the vise on the side of the valve and then I'm going to remove the two end caps and the spool will be located inside there. Okay, so first of all I'm going to use an 8mm Allen key to remove the 8mm end cap and then on the other side there's a 6mm end cap. Again, I'm going to keep all of the little parts together so that I don't lose anything. Okay, now I can check to see whether the valve spool is actually moving. So inside the valve body, you can see the valve spool uh, inside there. Now what we would expect to see if this valve was working properly is as the levers moved, we would expect to see that valve spool move inside the, uh, inside the valve body. But hopefully what you can notice there is that as the, as the lever moves, there's no movement of that spool. The spool's effectively stuck in position. So what I'm going to need to do next is remove the handle, remove the spool and find out why the lever isn't engaging with the valve spool. Okay, so once again I've secured the valve body in such a way as to make sure I don't damage um, any of the, the O-rings or any of the other components. Now I'm going to remove the handle, which is just secured by this tiny grub screw. And then hopefully the handle should come out, or the, uh, the lever should come out of the, of the holder there. Okay, so next we're going to need to remove um, this holder here. There'll be some ball bearings in that allow this section to rotate and then we can really inspect what's happening um, with the spool and the locating pin for the, uh, for the lever here. Okay, so inside here we have a number of ball bearings which form um, part of the ball race. Um, what we're going to need to do next is remove those ball bearings so that this part of the valve can be removed and then we'll be able to identify our problem. As you can see it's a fairly drawn out process ensuring I get all of these ball bearings out. What I'm actually going to do in a moment is release the valve body from the, um, release the, valve body from the vise and actually tip those ball bearings out into my hand and into the tray. Okay, now all of those have been removed, we can remove the last part of the lever. Okay, so now that I've re removed that part of the, the lever, this is the part that actually engages with the valve spool. And what you'll notice on there is that there's um, a, small, uh, a small grommet, if you like, and that would actually have to sit in the, in the groove that's on the, on the valve spool. 
Um, if that doesn't uh, interact with the groove in the valve spool, then as the lever turns and rotates, it's not going to encourage the valve spool to slide backwards and forwards. What you actually notice on this one is that that's been sheared off. Okay, so what's happening is as the lever's moving and as this part's rotating, it's not engaging with the valve spool, enabling it to move backwards and forwards. I'll just remove the valve spool and show you how those, how those two components engage. Okay, so that's the valve spool that sits inside the valve body. And what should happen is that that grommet should sit inside the valve spool like so. So that as the lever rotates, it would pull the valve spool back and as the lever rotates in the opposite direction it would push the valve spool forward. So as mentioned because that's sheared off uh, we're not getting the, the level of contact required to move the valve spool. Okay unfortunately we don't have a replacement for that part at the moment so we're not going to be able to um, to repair the fault. Ideally we'd be able to replace this component. Um, we would then have a um, uh, uh, sufficient interference between that and the groove on the valve spool um, so that we could uh, repair, the, repair the component and put it back in service. For the purpose of this video we'll assume that we have repaired that fault so we would then basically reverse the process. We'd start off by returning the valve spool into position and we'd have to make sure that that was in far enough um, so that we would get that interference fit with the, uh, the other part of the lever. We would then ensure, as we replace this, that the, uh, the part that we had repaired or the part that we had replaced would sit inside that groove on the valve spool. So we'd ensure that lined up and replace that. And we would then go through the process of returning the ball bearings and replacing the cover of the lever before returning the lever. Okay, so once the lever's put back into spot, we would then be able to check whether the, uh, the lever was engaging with the valve spool. Um, so we could look through uh, before we replace the end caps, and then providing the repair's gone successfully, we would move the lever and we would see the valve spool move. Uh, we replace the two end caps uh, on either side of the valve body. and they would be tightened up to the required torque and then to finish the repair we would replace the valve body back on the manifold and replace um, the blanking caps on top of the valve Okay, and that's our valve ready to test and return to service.